This tutorial explains how to read Excel files in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So before we can read an Excel file into R, we first need to create some example data that we can read later on. And we can do that as you can see in lines two to 12 of the code. So in lines two and three of the code, I'm loading the iris data set, which is already loaded in R after running these lines of code. And you can also see at the bottom in the R Studio console, the first six rows of this data set. So as you can see, this data set contains five columns with different values. Now, if we want to write these data as an XLSX file from R to our computer, we first need to install and load the XLSX package, as you can see in lines five and six of the code. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line six of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the XLSX package. Furthermore, we also need to specify the path to the working directory in which we want to work. So in this case, I have created a working directory on the desktop of my computer, which is called my directory. And as you can see at this point, this directory is empty. So if we run line eight of the code, our working directory is set to this directory on the desktop of my computer. And then in the next step, I can use the write.xlsx function of the xlsx package to write the iris data set in a new Excel file in the working directory on my desktop. So if you run lines 10 to 12 of the code, you can see that we have created a new Excel file, which is called iris in the working directory. So now let's assume that we want to read this file into R. Then we can use the XLSX package once again, as you can see in lines 14 and 15 of the code. And for this, I need to use the read.xlsx function, as you can see in line 14. And within this function, I need to specify the name of the XLSX file that I want to import. So in this case, we want to import the XLSX file iris.xlsx. And then we also need to specify a sheet indicator. So in this case, our Excel file contains only one sheet. And for that reason, we need to specify the sheet index argument to be equal to one. So if you run lines 14 to 15 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing. And this data set contains the iris data that we have stored before in the Excel file iris.xlsx. So in this first example, I have explained how to use the XLSX package to read an Excel file into R. However, there are also other alternatives available. And in the next examples, I want to show you different alternatives to the XLSX package. So in the next example, I want to use the read XL package to import our Excel file. And for this, we first need to install and load the package, as you can see in lines 17 and 18 of the code. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 18 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can use the read underscore Excel function, as you can see in line 20 of the code. And within this function, we simply need to specify the name of the Excel file that we want to import. So if you run line 20 of the code, you can see that another data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data2. And this data set contains exactly the same values as the previously created data set data1. However, this time we have used the read XL package instead of the XLSX package. Another alternative is provided by the open XLSX package that you can see in lines 22 and 23. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 23 of the code. And then we can apply the read.xlsx function to our data. Please note that this function has the same name as the read.xlsx function of the xlsx package. And for that reason, it's very important to specify the package name in front of the function to tell R which package you want to use. So in this case, we want to use the open xlsx package to load our data. And for that reason, we are specifying the package name open xlsx in front of the read.xlsx function. 
And in case of the open XLSX package, we again need to specify only the name of our data file. So in this case, iris.xlsx. And then we can store the output of this in another data set, which is called data3. So if you run line 25 of the code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that another data set is appearing, which is called data3. This data set also contains the same values as the other data sets that we have created before. However, this time we have used the open XLSX package. So in the first three examples, I have explained how to read a single Excel file into R. However, it's also possible to read an Excel file with multiple sheets into R. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 27 of the code. So first we need to modify our Excel file and we need to add an additional sheet to this file. And in this case, I want to use the empty cars data set that we can load with line 27 of the code. And if we run line 28 of the code, we can see at the bottom in the RStudio console the structure of this data set. And as you can see, this data set contains car information. So it contains completely different values and columns as the iris data set. And then in the next step, I'm again using the write.xlsx function to write this data set to another sheet in our already existing Excel file. So in this case, we have to specify the name of the data set that we want to write. Then we have to specify the name of the file. So in our folder, we have already stored the iris.xlsx file. Then we need to specify the append argument to be equal to true. And we need to specify a sheet name that we want to use for our second sheet. So in this case, I'm calling this sheet empty cars. So if you run lines 30 to 34 of the code, our Excel file is updated, as you can see by opening this Excel file. So as you can see, this Excel file now contains a sheet which is called sheet one. And this first sheet contains the iris data set. However, in addition to that, we have created a second sheet, which is called empty cars. And this second sheet contains the empty cars data set. So now let's assume that we want to import the second sheet of our iris xlsx file, which is called empty cars. Then we can use the read.xlsx function of the xlsx package, as you can see in lines 36 and 37. And within this function, we need to specify the file name iris.xlsx and the sheet name. And as you know, our sheet containing the empty cars data set is called empty cars. And then we are storing the output of this in another data set, which is called data sh2. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that another data frame is appearing, which is called data underscore sh2. And this data set contains the empty cars data set from our Excel file iris.xlsx. So in this example, I have explained how to read a second sheet from an Excel file. However, it's also possible to read multiple Excel files that are stored in different file objects. And this is what I want to show you in the next example of this tutorial, starting in line 39 of the code. So first we are creating a second Excel file, as you can see in lines 39 to 41. And in these lines, I'm writing the empty cars data set that we have already loaded before into a new XLSX file. So if you run these lines of code, you can see in our working directory that a second file is appearing, which is called empty cars. And now in the next step, we can use the list.files function to return a list of all file names in our working directory that have the file ending xlsx. So if you run line 43 of the code, you can see that a new vector object is appearing at the top right, which is called all file names. And we can print this vector object to the RStudio console by running line 44 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector containing two vector elements and the first vector element contains the name of our first Excel file and the second vector element contains the name of our second Excel file. Now in the next step, we can apply the lapply function and the read underscore Excel function, as you can see in line 46. 
and we are storing the output of the lapply function in a new data object, which is called data list. So if you run line 46 of the code, you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line 47 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a list object with two list elements. And each of these list elements contains one of our data sets. So the first list element contains the iris data set and the second list element contains the empty cars data set. Please note that these data sets have been formatted to the tibble class because the read underscore Excel function creates tibbles instead of data frames. So in the next example, I want to show you how to read an XLS file instead of an XLSX file. And for that, we first need to create an XLS file, as you can see in lines 49 to 51 of the code. So in these lines of code, I'm using basically the same syntax as in the previous examples to write our data. However, this time I'm specifying XLS instead of XLSX. So if you run lines 49 to 51 of the code, you can see in our working directory that another data set has been created, which is called Iris. However, this data set is an XLS file instead of an XLSX file. So if we want to import these data to R, then we can apply the read XLSX function as we already did before. However, this time we have to specify the file name to be equal to iris.xls. So if you run lines 53 to 54 of the code, you can see that another data set is appearing at the top right, which is called data XLS. And this file contains exactly the same data as the other data sets. However, this time we have imported the data from an XLS file instead of an XLSX file. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.